Hi there, and welcome to another one of our Brexit Explained videos. In this one, we're going to talk about Boris Johnson's Brexit plan. We took a brief look at it during the earlier rounds of the leadership election, but if we're honest, it wasn't particularly clear exactly what his plan was back then. There was some vague stuff about renegotiating the backstop and flirting with the idea of proroguing, but nothing of actual substance. Since then, he's given us some more details about what exactly his plan is. And given that he's probably going to be Prime Minister, that makes Johnson's plan essentially the UK's plan. So we thought it was worth giving it a look through and seeing what exactly his plan is. So during a recent spate of media interviews, Johnson did an interview with Talk Radio, where he gave his three-tier Brexit plan, with plan A, B and C. If plan A doesn't work, then it comes in plan B. And if plan B doesn't work, then yeah, you guessed it, plan C. Just a quick thanks before we get to that though. Thank you to all of our over 1,000 patrons. It's thanks to your donations that we've hit our first two goals, which means that the TLDR News podcast and a new series of This Week in Parliament are coming soon. To help us reach the next goal, getting a TLDR studio, as well as some exclusive perks, head over to our Patreon page. There's a link to that in the description. So, back to Johnson's plans. What exactly is Plan A? Well, Plan A is to renegotiate the withdrawal agreement and this time get rid of the backstop. This isn't surprising, as pretty much all of the candidates for Prime Minister propose a variation of this plan. That's because, and in case you missed it, Brexiteers hate the backstop. That's because it keeps the UK in a single customs territory with the EU, and commits to level playing field regulations across a range of sectors, with no unilateral means of getting out. They're worried that if no trade deal was agreed, then the UK will be stuck in a backstop indefinitely, which means no new trade deals with the US or anyone else. The EU insists on the backstop because it prevents any infrastructure on the Irish border and protects the integrity of the single market, even if the UK and EU can't agree on anything. The EU has been pretty clear that they don't plan on reopening the withdrawal agreement, let alone getting rid of the backstop, and Johnson hasn't exactly explained how he's going to get them to change their mind and renegotiate it. So it's fair to say that there's a pretty decent chance that this plan won't end up working, and Johnson will be forced into Plan B. Plan B is to go for a no deal, but there's a catch. Johnson proposes using Article 24 of the General Agreement on Trade and Tariff, or GATT, to create an interim period during which a free trade deal can be agreed. GATT is sort of the founding legislation of the World Trade Organization, hence why it's occasionally referred to as WTO Article 24. Anyway, Johnson claims that such a free trade deal could be sorted out without border infrastructure, and according to him there's abundant technical fixes. If you want to know more about that, go and check out our video on border technology, there'll be a link down below. Anyway, GATT 24 has popped up a number of times in the past three years as a potential silver bullet to no deal issues, and at one time or another has been advocated by Jacob Rees-Mogg, Nigel Farage, and now Boris Johnson. Sorry for yet more promos, but we've done a video on this too, which goes into much more detail. So if you'd like a proper run through of what Article 24 is and whether it will work, go and watch that video, because honestly, we don't have time to run through all that now. If you can't be bothered doing that, then here's a brief explainer. GATT 24 basically allows countries which are in the process of sorting out a trade deal to trade without tariffs while they finalise their trade deal. This is something that would otherwise violate the World Trade Organization's Most Favoured Nation Principle. The Most Favoured Nation Principle states that any WTO member has to apply the same tariffs to all other WTO members unless they have some sort of bespoke deal with the nation. GATT 24 therefore allows you to break that principle and trade tariff free as long as you and the other country are nearly at a deal. To implement GATT 24, both parties have to come up with and agree to a plan of implementation, which then has to be sent over to the World Trade Organization, where it's reviewed by all of the WTO member states. This means that when we bring it back to Brexit, GATT 24 can't be triggered by the UK alone. It needs the EU to agree to it as well. It also means that any proposal will be subject to legally binding recommendations by all of the other WTO members. Even if you put that aside, the EU is still really unlikely to agree to any interim agreement. Just think about it for a second. If the EU refuses Plan A, 
not budging on the withdrawal agreement, not scrapping the backstop, and forcing Johnson and the UK into resorting to GATT24. Why would they suddenly buckle and agree to GATT24's interim agreement, which would essentially be the transition phase of the withdrawal agreement without the backstop they want so badly? Put simply, why would the UK and EU be able to do a deal based on some obscure piece of WTO legislation that's literally never been used before when they can't do a deal on their own terms? This is why as soon as Plan B came out, it was rubbished by Mark Carney. For those of you who don't know, Carney is the governor of the Bank of England. And a few days after Johnson laid out his plan, Carney made a rare intervention to say that GATT24 only applies if there's an agreement and not in the case of a no deal, when there's been no agreement. Carney put it very simply when he spoke to the BBC, saying that GATT24 applies if you have an agreement, not if you've decided not to have an agreement, or have been unable to come to an agreement. Carney has long been against the idea of the UK leaving the EU without a deal, citing the economic damage that he sees such an outcome leading to. He said that up to 150,000 British businesses didn't have the paperwork needed to export to the EU if a no deal happens, which means that only 40% of British businesses are properly prepared. He also said that businesses importing goods from the EU only have a very short-term level of preparation, with stockpiles which would only last weeks. Johnson has since hit back at Carney's core claim about GATT. Johnson has admitted that GATT24 does require a bilateral agreement, but has insisted that the EU might agree to it. This came out in a radio interview where Johnson said that Carney was right that there had to be an agreement on both sides, but that he was wrong to say it's not an option. Johnson went on to say that Article 24 made it perfectly clear that two countries that are in the process of beginning a free trade agreement may protract their existing arrangements until such time they've completed a new free trade agreement. But this has never been tested before, and it's unclear if the EU will cooperate and how far through the process of getting a deal sorted you'd have to be for the World Trade Organization to accept it. Anyway, for a better explainer on that whole topic, it's worth checking out our other video. And it's not even a long one. Let's say that Plan B also fails. Then Johnson will need to resort to Plan C. Plan C is to go for a straight out no deal. And Johnson said that he'll withhold the 39 billion that the UK owes the EU to try and use it as leverage to force the EU to come back to the table with a better offer, presumably hoping they'll agree to his ideal solution, a version of the withdrawal agreement without the backstop. This Plan C no-deal approach would probably preclude the possibility of any bilateral agreements between the UK and EU to mitigate the damage, and so both would have to rely on unilateral measures to keep everything flowing smoothly. And people of all political stripes have agreed that a no deal like this could get pretty messy. At this point, it's probably worth taking a look at that infamous £39 billion, and whether or not Johnson, or any other Brexiteer for that matter, is allowed to withhold it. Well, the divorce bill, as it's come to be known, is made up of basically two parts. The UK's contributions to the EU's budget up until 2020, and the longer term commitments to stuff like pensions and infrastructure projects. Most of it would end up being paid by 2020, but some of the financial commitments go all the way forward to 2064. The sum of money owed is, is where the £39 billion figure comes from. It's not clear whether or not the UK is legally obliged to pay the EU this £39 billion, because the financial obligations to the EU are enshrined in European Union law, which becomes irrelevant for the UK once they leave the EU. However, like most legal stuff, it's not that simple. And the fact that the UK is committed to paying the sum in more recent joint reports might mean they end up having to. The European Union could even take the case to the International Court of Justice. But none of us at TLDR are lawyers, so we're not going to anticipate the final verdict or the legality of it all. Regardless of whether it's legal or not, withholding £39 billion might not be a good idea. It's not a good look for a state to be seen as reneging on its existing financial commitments. It could even affect the UK's credit rating if investors begin to doubt whether or not the UK can be trusted to pay back its debts. Not to get too into the details of the credit rating, but a poorer rating would basically mean that the UK would have to offer steeper interest rates to possible investors, which wouldn't be great for the economy. However, there's an even more fundamental issue with falling back onto Plan C. Parliament has made it clear that they don't want a no deal. 
and it's not clear how the Prime Minister can force through a no-deal without doing something drastic, like, say, proroguing Parliament. Prorogation is basically the ending of a parliamentary session, and refers to the time between the end of a parliamentary session and the beginning of the next one. Essentially, the plan here is that if the current Parliament won't approve a no-deal, the Prime Minister could then just suspend Parliament, and leave it in this prorogued state until the October 31st deadline passes, and then bring them back when it's too late for them to stop anything. Again, there's far too much to cover here, so we've done a whole other video on that topic. In that video, you can find much more detailed analysis on prorogation, and whether it's a real possibility or not. Anyway, this might be why Johnson has refused to rule it out, because he knows that it might be the only way to force a no-deal Brexit. So, those are Johnson's three plans, and the potential issues with each level. We hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you want more updates on Brexit and the news as a whole, then make sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also find us across other social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. Um... Um...